If you've ever used your phone for mobile software to find radio operation, you've no doubt noticed that there is very little software available to take on the challenge. We've seen the likes of SDR Touch and RF Analyzer, but quickly find that they only support one or two SDRs, and depending on your needs, are quite lacking in features. Today on Signals Everywhere, I'd like to present to you the first public release of the Android version of SDR++. Unlike other SDR apps on Android, you'll notice that SDR++ retains its original graphical interface from its desktop counterpart. With some minor scaling adjustments depending on your device, the app should fit on any display quite beautifully while retaining all the features you would expect from the desktop release of SDR++ that you all know and love. Before we start up SDR++, we'll want to connect our software to find radio and ensure OTG mode is enabled on our device. Select your SDR from the source and hit the refresh button to populate the device list. Then simply hit the play button like you would on the desktop release of SDR++. SDR++ brings us support for SDRs previously not functional on Android. As of this recording, that includes the RTL SDR, the AirSpy series of software-defined radios, the HackRF, RF space SDRs, and of course anything that you can connect to with an SDR++ server by using the Android version as your client. For example, I was able to remotely view an SDR Play RSP Duo even though there is not currently native support for it within Android. Keeping in mind, this release is the first public pre-release of the SDR++ Android app and thus there are a few bugs to be aware of if you're trying this out at the time this video was uploaded. Some of the issues that are currently being worked on are some UI glitches, audio latency issues, and occasional crashing, neither of which is something that I had experienced while testing the application. Among some of the things I tried was listening to narrowband NOAA weather, L-band Inmarsat thanks to the Bias T support, a P25 radio system, some broadcast FM, and with split screen on Android, I was also able to run SDR++ alongside APRS Droid to decode packets in real time using an RTL SDR. Before we dive too much deeper into the application, I wanted to show you how we can adjust our DPI settings, as this is greatly going to influence how easy it is to make these fine-tuned adjustments to the display, as well as how easy it is going to be to see everything that's on the actual um, SDR++ interface, depending on the uh, resolution of your individual device. In this situation, SDR++ is set to the default of... Uh, 300% on the uh, DPI scaling here. So if we come in here, we're going to change 300% down to uh, 200%, and that's going to give us a uh, slightly smaller display. You'll see a restart is required, so we're just going to close the application and then open it back up. Um, but what you'll get here once everything's up and running is that it is scaled a bit better um, for the device in terms of its visual um, looks. You're able to see the full um, interface just as you would on, say, the desktop application. Uh, however, you may notice that it's much harder for me to grab onto these various sections of the UI and move them around because that scaling is making the application much smaller. Now, if we switch this to 100% scaling, we'll see the native DPI here. Um, and as you can tell, everything is extremely tiny. It's super high resolution. And unfortunately, when you run at too high of a resolution, you run into an issue where you are unable to easily um, interact with different things on the display. So it's important that you uh, play around with this and adjust those DPI settings so that they work correctly for the particular device that you happen to have. So in order to show the real utility here of having SDR++ being just as capable on Android as it is on, say, Windows, Linux, or OS X, is I wanted to go ahead and use some of the built-in modules uh, for SDR++, and I thought a nice way of doing that would be to go into um, an HF-capable device, and we're going to set up a multi-VFO. Um, basically adding a second radio module so that way we can listen to two single sideband voice channels at the same time within the 80 or 40 meter ham bands. 
So the first thing we're going to want to do is scroll down to our modules window and what we need to do is actually type in a name for this new module. I'm going to go ahead and name it VFO2 and then we'll want to select the radio module and then press the plus button in order to add that module to the SDR++ uh, roster if you will and get everything up on the display. Once that's taken care of, we can now grab each of those individual um, VFOs or radio modules and then tune them in to whichever two single sideband channels that we wish to and we can listen to them simultaneously. Now this is just one example of something that you could do with the application but the software truly is limitless. Essentially anything that you can do on the desktop version you're going to be able to do right here in Android as well. I really want to show how much better SDR++ is on Android in comparison to some of the other stuff that we have. Let's go ahead and take a quick listen to a few FM radio stations using RF Analyzer and SDR Touch so that we can compare it to SDR++. And then I wanted to show you SDR++ really tackling a high bandwidth task. Here we have the HackRF uh, displaying a full 20 megahertz or 20 mega samples per second. Uh, this is running the bias -T out to a Sirius XM um, satellite uh, radio antenna that I've modified with an SMA connector so that we can now uh, go in and listen to one of the Sirius XM transponders. And it's just really nice to have this ability in a small portable mobile platform. And with all of that being said, I want to thank both the developer of SDR++ Riserith on Twitter um, for their amazing work and their contributions to the amateur radio hobby through the SDR++ software. And of course, I want to thank each and every one of my uh, YouTube subscribers, my members, my patrons, each and every one of you that share, like, and even contribute financially to the channel are helping keep this channel alive. And honestly, you're helping me pay the bills in the process as well. Um, so I just want to thank you all dearly from the uh, bottom of my heart. Uh, thank you for supporting this channel and thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Bye.